So I want to give you another bite of the apple here with my information. So this is a true um, punching shear failure in that it's not a critical shear zone failure around the critical shear zone, which is really a tributary failure. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So here's the critical shear zone. Let me give you a drawing first. And here's the column. And that critical shear zone, you know, the, like the, the uh, nine sixes and six twelves, whatever they call over the top of the head, that little, those boxes we see in the drawing for you guys. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> and then here's another column here. And it has its version also. And in between there, there's some steel connecting the two of them together. As this deflects, and then I'll show the deflection here. If it deflects in, this is of great design, of mean a superior design. The shear heads and the critical shear zone area here, the rebar, the reinforcement in that area, which is which is uh, significant, is is worked. If it works, then you just get the tributary area failure, the tributary area failure. But if you just see the column only, which we see in this image in the background, this is showing you, one, they got their critical shear zone wrong. This area here is wrong. And it's, well, it's down to the column now. It's, that is true punching shear. Let me show you what I mean in two different forms. So this is the one that, this image is the one that shows up all the time under punching shear. Um, as you can see the title here in the article. This is not punching shear, all right? This is the critical shear zone. That's the column. The failures between the, the, the critical shear zones and the column and the critical shear zones. This is a tributary deflection failure breaking, fracturing away at the critical shear zone right on the outside. It's on the outside of the critical shear zone. All right? This is not a punching shear failure. It looks, and people call it that, but reality, this didn't fail. You're looking at a non-failed section. This did not fail what failed is the tributary area was too great too overloaded and it uh deflected so much that it broke right at the critical shear zone let me show you what that looks like with uh, cts with cts the so you would reckon i'm gonna grab this one here this is the column in the middle there right and then the part outside of it that's the critical shear zone and that's the part you read it says 16 number fives it says go that direction that's rebar i'm sorry somebody told me the other day that they called me up and they told me hey i don't understand um you know what you mean with some of that so it's rebar it means that in that direction since it's usually this way that it'll be 16 of them and the center of the column would be going from the center column out and so you would get a total of 16 in that direction and an opposing direction I think that one says 18 number fives. So it would be nine on one side, nine on the other. And that makes that huge, beautiful, critical shear zone. Very strong boxes. See, look, the critical shear zones. All of those are the critical shear zones. Between the critical shear zones, so I'm going to do this one and this one, is the tributary area. That has its own steel between it to get from critical shear zone to the tributary area, I'm sorry, to get from the tributary area, which I want you to think of this part, the middle part between the, those boxes, right? Between this one box to the next box, all right? Critical shear zone, think of that. That's these. Now, to get through between from A to B, from, from one to the other, there's steel between them. In this case, there's 10 number fours that direction and the other opposing direction it's gonna be a little harder to see um identify rather is what i meant okay in opposing direction it's let me zoom in 
and the letting it load in imposing direction there's 20 number fours this is this is an interesting here's 21 number fours so we can use the center line or you can use the outside incidentally to measure from uh the the the, the code's kind of not odd on that one measuring from the outside face or inside or center line well using the face division you come up with the uh you come up with 21 number fours so you, that would overlap that would uh, well, oddly they show this this line here it almost like it stops right you so see you go up there this says 20 number fours but remember this is an offset um but above it let me do this if i scroll up where'd you go this is it's uh where'd you go i'm trying to find this see that says eight fours there's also a 12 fours um I'm trying to figure which drawing i'm looking at all right there it is 12 fours 12 fours so on this side in this critical shear zone so the distance from here to here are 12. i don't know what the distance is but i want to show you show you how that adds up so in this critical shear zone I mean, I'm sorry, critical shear zone is made composed of this, all right? So you're looking, I'm, I'm going to clean it up. It's composed of what you see there inside that box. To get from this box to this box, it uses, first it uses 10 number fours, you see there, going across from there to there. All right, that's that direction. 10 number fours, I'm going to remove these. All right, I'm sorry, just to get to um, there. All right, so it's going to be some some issues there because i want to know do they mean to and i can't t tell that do they mean up to the critical shear zone <clears throat> and so 10 fours is there which you create what an overlap of steel so this just says 19 fives so if these are 10 fours do i go over there but now i want you to keep in mind that this 16 fives and 19 fives this is going to be top steel of the re of the column you're going to put that steel near the top. So this will be up here. There's 19 fives crisscrossing each other. Let's do this. So uh, let's just, it will be crisscrossing that way at the top. That's the, that's the steel that stops the deflection as you stress trying to pull it, as you try to, the deck tries to deflect and pull down from one span. I'm going to do over here. I'm going to switch just to red. To the other span. Let's see if I don't screw this up for you guys trying to show you what I mean. Okay, and I'll put the column over here too. All right. So then I'm going to close that up and I'll close this one up. So this is your, what's the, what's in the yellow call? The tributary area. What's in the red call, the red box? This is your critical shear zone, right? I'm going to do this. CSZ. All right, and this is your the tributary zone the, the, between it the tributary zone i showed you of george in a video a long time ago when george sat on a chair i said hmm what is george doing here was it bruce well when you sit on a chair the 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 legs of the chair just an old metal chair type of chair four legs the metal of the chair has corners and each corner is is the critical shear zone no steel across it but it could you could punch through there if it was thin, but they designed it so your hiney doesn't go through there punching it through the steel at all. There will be no steel punching, no punching through with that load. When you sit on it, George was, Bruce was sitting on the tributary area, the middle of the chair, stressing all four corners theoretically. This, as you look at it, just a simple one, one off, not trying to change directions and talk about more stress the other direction. Just this area alone. Is with deflection in the middle, the dead weight pulls on the reinforcement that may be in here going across. And that steel that goes across, it looks like, oops, yeah, 20 number fours. So it's not 20 of them, it's from here to here. That's a pretty big distance. I think it's 20 feet. 
So we're only talking about midge section, let's say, is 10. So between those two to engage, I'm only going to add maybe four pieces of steel across there. So one, two, three, four, and then the rest are out, are out here over to, over to 10, and then 10 over to there, to the face. But again, that means it's doubling down in my critical shear zone. I don't know that to be true. NIST is not disclosing that to us. They clearly could have opened up the slab and talked about more critical things like this. They're not. So as far as we know, don't know, is that they did this, but you're going to need, all right, so just, let's just make this clear. You're just not going to run steel right to there. There's no connection. It just doesn't butt up there and you wish you luck. It's going to engage here across on into the deck. There will be the bottom steel, though. This is going to be bottom steel for the tributary, for the, for the, uh, tributary area because it, it 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 has deflection in that capacity so it will be as we saw and i showed you in a couple videos back to overlap steel all right on that head now let's make it make sense all right remember the overlap steel i showed you when i said there's two pieces of steel and i said what is that and i showed you that and then i did this and i said oh i got it you know i try to teach you that way so anyway so there's some overlapping steel and it's going the other direction okay Let's do an arrow. So there's just going in that direction. So there's some overlapping bottom steel. It was below the, the heads, as you recall. And maybe I'll have to show it to you. These uh, heads, as uh, as Bell calls them, hooks. They're not hooks, all right? They're 90s. They're engaging the critical shear zone. They're creating, they're engaging that. They're locking that in, locking in with the column. You just don't set it on top of the column. So that's what they job, their job is. They're not going to be doing much um, engagement. You're, there, there's no tying into those in this, it, in this, it appears. So as you see, as we're looking at it, this, in this profile position, deflection in this area here, this is the tributary, the midsection, would normally pull on the critical shear zone. And then only the tributary area is failed. All right, let, let me show you that, what I mean. It's because it shows that this, this critical shear zone, remember these boxes? Critical shear zones, critical shear zones, critical shear zones. Those boxes are the critical shear zones. Between them, what? Tributary areas. Hold that thought. So as you look here, what, what could you tell me now? You would say, oh, that's the critical shear zone. So beyond the critical shear zone is a failure. So we have a, a, a deflection as to in this tributary area, not the critical shear zones. They held up. They did not punch through around the column. This article says it's punching shear. It is not punching shear. This article is by some engineering site, civildigital.com, if you guys want to find it. Civil engineering site. This is not punching shear. No matter what they tell you here, this is a failure. And this is not punching shear. All right? It is not punching shear. This is a deflection failure in the tributary zone with the connection to the critical shear zone. What we have is true punching shear. Remember, I have two things I call one punk shear and one punching shear. It helps me to think of that one punched through the column, through the floor, and one is punching shear is through the top, you know, vice versa. But you triggered some people, so I'll just say it. I won't use my own code. I'll just say, you know, punching shear for all of you to, to not be triggered. All right, so this was overloaded, probably because they put asphalt on top of concrete and then loaded it many times, cycled all loaded. And it, it, it's, a, it's a brittle... Brittle connection. It can become brittle, especially with the loading, depending how it's loaded. In our case, we have um, critical shear zones that are all suck. Every last one of them suck. Now hold that thought. In other words, this area here went down also. So our deflection, our deflection 
I'm trying to play a play on word. Our deflection uh, mirrored itself. Deflection, reflection. I'm trying to add in deflection. I like playing with words. Our deflection reflected itself in that it broke all the way over to here, which tells us they probably did not have the critical shear zones built up properly. But remember, we still have that offset column that I'll show you. Let's go to that now again and talk about it. So luck would have it, I just scrubbed through here. It's because every time I leave this video, I got to come back. It makes me start over. So I just scrubbed up to it. So I'm going to press play in a moment. But this, before I start, this, do you see the critical shear zones up there? No. No, this is a critical shear. This is the deflection in the deck, including over, including engrossing the critical shear zones, pulling them down around the um, columns. So we now we have a deflecting deck, including the critical shear zones. Okay, so it's just not a punching shear, uh, punching shear like the civil engineering uh, site I just took you to. Doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. And really, engineering really sucks. It reminds me of a joke I make up saying, "In a few years, I'm going to be able to start telling people, this younger generation." That you know they had really problems with a lot of cell phone towers during the uh, Gettysburg War. And they're going like, what do you mean? What happened? They took out the towers, cell phone towers? And I'm like, yeah, they took out the cell phone towers. Because it, people are getting dumber and dumber by the day. They're not teaching anything. So pretty soon I'll be able to tell the new generation about the cell phone towers. Did it act up during the Getty Civil War and Revolutionary War and things like that, you know? And and they then satellites acted up. I'll be able to... Pretty soon tell that and, and look at the person and they'll really uh, believe it. I'm not trying to troll you in this. I'm just saying it, that people are getting dumber and dumber by the minute. Now, this he's supposed to be a foremost expert because he's uh, Bell and he's part of NIST organization. Now, he was teaching. Now, he's part of NIST organization. So, these are supposed to be the foremost experts. And yet, they can't tell the difference between punching shear and critical shear zone failures. Watch what I show you here with his own words and his own image. So first they show us this. Strip down. Remember like a condom. I said just strip down. Just pull right over it. Right? That's it. Now let's let him talk for a moment. And then we'll, he's going to get to the diagram. We'll talk. We'll show you what the stupidity of their diagram. How he's, he's proud that they're going to bring in the... Uh, the uh, they're gonna make this, um, whatever the hell, graphics, whatever I'm talking about, auto animation, full scale replicas of different parts of the CTS structure, okay. and that will include tests on specimens, um, of with corrosion of various degrees. So, this corrosion of the top steel reinforcement even further erodes, um, the margins of safety against failure as that corrosion can damage the surrounding concrete and may reduce or compromise the strength of or, or the toughness of the reinforcing bars. Now this, uh, this issue of determining the impact of the degree of corrosion in the slab and its effect is a really important and challenging part of our investigation. Our future work in this area is going to involve a lot more detailed work in trying, look, triangulating a lot of data to understand the distribution of the degree of corrosion in different parts of the pool deck slab and through our... Let me stop this a minute. Sorry, I'm meeting Greg Putin in the background. But they were there immediately, guys. They were on it immediately. With that said, I don't know if he was there immediately, but they were there immediately. And you would think they would have the expertise, which you saw them take half of this apart and destroy it. I did a video on that. Um, that they would take this apart, the critical shear zones, to look at them. Take them, cut them out, and have them. They were cutting out stuff, taking away sections, but half of sections and 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 things like that. Instead of the full zones, full pieces. No, then they would let the guy just tear the deck apart, and then he took pieces, and now they're going to try to do guesstimates. Or, but it was never intended to be an honest investigation. Or they're the ones that believe the cell phone towers went down in Gettysburg. Our testing and our analytical work, the impact of that corrosion um, on the evaluation, on the capacity of the structure. So in summary here, uh, the low margins against failure started with the understrength of the pool deck structural design. 
Right. And so we are using a lot of evidence inside of the pool deck, and mm. you can see that by... Okay, let's let him play it. Let's let us hear him play it. See what he says on safety uh, margins of fa against failure in some areas of the pool deck that were critically low at the time of the collapse. Again, I want to say these uh, these are preliminary observations. We've not reached conclusions regarding the cause or causes of the collapse. Preliminary observation. Sorry, guys. Meeting rape food. I'm hungry. Preliminary observations. It's been years now. They have him come up with conclusive observations. Hmm. Cell phone towers, Gettysburg. Jack described, I think, very well um, how we are looking at that more general uh, problem. Uh, here's the image that we looked at earlier. Like so in May okay. of 2022, the Miami Herald um, ran an article showing cracks and other distress in uh, some of the planter walls that bound the west side of the pool deck and you can see that by the red arrow on the image on the upper left here um that article contains a photo of that isn't it amazing the red arrow is not more precise you see the red arrow in the background it's not more precise it's just th this is just like i don't know they're supposed to be the a team this is like uh, oh i got it this is, well, maybe maybe he's better than, um, uh, I was going to say tool time, but maybe tool time would have even put the red arrow better. So i got to think worse than that. No, oh, red arrow. Oh, I know. It would be like you trying to guess it before you had the plans, as you were trying to say, it's right about here. It'd be like you guessing it before you had the plans and trying to say, it's somewhere in general right here. That arrow should be a lot more precise. That pool deck taken in early June of 2021, so just about like three days before the failure. Uh, based on that photo, I created this figure that you see here. Okay, the image, he just said it was taken about three days before the failure. He's not stating that they called days before that to, to state that the, 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 the Sarah Blasky thanks uh, exist. That's for you guys who don't know, that's one of the viewers. She told me that, I keep saying, in the first one, Sarah Blakely, I was all proud of remembering her name, and then she says Blasky, and there screws up that. So, Sarah Blasky had the interview, um, it's, you probably pay for it, um, I paid for the listen to it, and interview with the, uh, let's call him the property manager, and he said he does the walk around every day, mostly every day. First he was confident about doing every day, then he changed it to mostly every day. It makes sense. Sometimes you can't do it, right? Maybe he's got to go away. Maybe he's sick, whatever. But this time he walked the deck and he noticed by the planter boxes those cracks. He then called the engineering firm that did the uh, the 40 year. They said, okay, uh, obviously they'll send their man out. Did they send him out that day? No. I've talked to you about that in a video because I didn't know yet until I heard Sarah Blasky's video that it was days before he called. He only was going to show up during the roof inspection for the um, the uh, uh, fall protection, whatever it was for windows, whatever the heck. Well, they the damn ties for the, on the roof. You guys know what they are. Not trolling, but you remember what the hell they are. Tell me. I'm not trolling the comments. I just forget the, the anchors. Ah, yeah. Anyway, he was coming that day. It was no panic on their part, and when he showed up. Remember, I tried to troll him out, but I kept saying, she, she, she. That didn't work. And I finally told you guys, it's a guy. All right. He um, stated that there was shrubbery there. NIST is not stating it's not shrubbery, so they're not calling him out. Because in that article, they talk about the guys identifying a shrubbery. Does, does uh, Bell say, no, it's not shrubbery? No, he ignores it. But I want you to look at this differently now. They're, they're rendering why he talks. Remember I talked about critical shear zones, so that would be like that over top of that column, right? On and on this one, it would be, well, depending on how large it was, it would be this one also. So between there is, they, they show deflection, okay? Deflection of the deck. Huh. Over here, they show deflection of the deck also, but if you, I'm going to, hmm, I can't zoom in on this one because it's not the image I downloaded. I'd have to get go to that one for a second. But I, maybe I will. But if you look at it, 
the, look at this and look at the top, the top of the deck, right? Follow it over to the left of my left arrow that I have there. And that line, that thin line where I actually stopped by luck, is where the top of the deck was supposed to be. Now, if you look at the bottom line, there's another, there's two lines out here. See them? The bottom of that represents the bottom of the deck. As you see his deflection in this rendering by these people that got $23 million, it practically shows the deck is at on that date is below. It's dropped nine and a half inches. There's some of it left above. It's, it's dropped at least eight inches, is what they is what this image is implying. There's only Per, per scale, it's only missing about an inch before it's fully dropped. Now let's clear that up, and I want you to look at this. They show this in place. Okay, no, 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 no I'm going to exaggerate. There's the, the uh, column, and there's a deck rotating down to the right, and deck rotating down to the left, respectively. Uh, this down, and then this down. Why do I say that? How can I say that? Because he just showed us an image of the column, what he called hooks, right? Where was nothing left. But yet, in his own, their own rendering, they show that the day of the image, their rendering shows it to be perfectly okay. No, no deflection in the critical shear zone. And over here, no deflection in the critical shear zone, but in the tributary area only. And out here, tributary area only. Yet, we see these frat, these openings in the lines indicating that the deck is sagging in two plate like that. We know it, we, I, can, I can extrapolate that because all that's left is the friggin' column. That's it. There is no critical shear zone that made it through this. Uh, only place inside the parking garage area because the column go, goes all the way up. No, the critical shear zone went out beyond that. Wait a minute. Let's let him talk, and then we'll go get back to that. Um, and there was a large horizontal crack. I think you can see it extending most of the span between K13.1 and K11.1. But to the left of column K13.1, there was a very abrupt and severe distress in the form of some rotation and a vertical displacement between the planter wall and the planter box right there. And, and this distress is consistent with unusually large slab deflections. It's consistent with our findings of low margins of safety. So he says it's part of the slab. By default, it's got to be deflection, guys. He's no genius there. If the damn thing's falling away, as we know with the image that the uh, the uh, Harold printed, he's talking about, it, is, it doesn't take a genius to say it's deflecting, it's pulling away. So no, no, uh, no credit for that. But you get a zero for showing the critical shear zone in great shape here. That this is in great shape. You get zero for that because we know that the whole deck, if you look at all the images. Not one critical shear zone made it out. Not even over at the pool deck where it came down. Even that son of a bitch went running around the rosy. So none of the critical shear zones made it out. Made it out alive like I showed you in that one image that they call punching shear, which is not punching shear. This would be punching shear. Now that's a critical zone area failure from the tributary area. It's more to look into that. But... Um, let's listen. And in fact, uh, the slab column connection at this line K.13.1 here, by it. our calculations, had one of the lowest margins of safety against failure um, in all of the pool deck. Very interesting is that there was another photograph in this Miami Herald article taken in April of 2020 from the same vantage point of the June 2021 one, so 14 months before. And that photograph exhibited no distress in this wall. So we're trying to determine what changed in that 14-month period there. They, so they can't figure out what changed. So uh, I'm going to shift to what's next. They're trying to figure out what changed. All right. Well, you got a report that came out that shows that the whole damn deck is full of shit. Now, hold on. Um, wait for it. 
So over here at the cars, oops, look, I'm confirmed to the bottom right. That's your Champagne Tower South. All right, August 22, 2029. Also, what I do to confirm so I don't make a mistake is look at the heights. They're both 1110s. So over here where the cars were, they have what? A critical shear zone. We see that they're pretty much stripped down to the column, though. The critical shear zones don't make it out. Nowhere do we see this like we see in the other, which is right here. The critical shear zones make it out, even on this deck. But on this design, they don't make it out. There's too many offsets. There's probably, you know, and they don't, and this won't tell us what they looked at. Remember they threw away steel? I did a video showing them tossing it away. So they don't show us that zone. The one thing that we wanted to know about, the New York Post or whatever they were, one of the New York, New York something article, um, even they extrapolated about that. NIST stays clear of that, about the critical shear zones. Why? So I just pulled up an Im image you can go look yourself. Just research critical shear zones and you'll see that what, how it, why it matters, all right? How it ties in. Okay, let me see if there's more of it. There's more there to your left. I did a video on this showing that how they try to do extrapolation by pulling down. I said, ah, it doesn't really work that way. But, you know, and I sort of said, yeah, they, they, they dropped the ball on that, that, that model. Okay, so you can see that the, uh, the critical shear zone. There's the column. This one states column here. And the critical shear zone makes it out in that one um, punching shear, quote, punching shear image we look at with the uh, civil engineering uh, group um, post. But yet, it does not. Um, this structure has all critical shear zone failures, even at the columns at the parking garage. There is no um, critical shear zone uh, making it. So the, the, they didn't have a critical shear zone. It worked, period. Anywhere on the entire deck out there. It, once it started pulling down, it didn't care if it was the last one on the end over there by the pool, over here by the pool. The last, even that one got ring around the rosy. Every single one, and they're number 28 or whatever it is that's out there, it got ring around the rosy. Every single one, including at the parking garage, all the critical shear zones failed. That was, they were not built up properly. They were not reinforced. As we look at their image, they just had two pieces of bar across that it looks like bypassing. And I do that in video number two. Oh, I didn't label these so as two, so I've got to get to that. So now, finding further images of the NIST. Remember the one they threw out metal. I think this this might be that piece that they threw out the uh, metal into the uh, some of the steel they reached in there and grabbed and tossed. Um, this would be the top steel and bottom steel. Remember, he talks about the top steel being two inches below the grade, below the surface, as opposed to three quarter. Well. The imagine if I just put the steel on top, just just put the steel right on top, right on top, right on right on the top surface. Does that give me punching shear ability? Uh, so I put it right below the surface by three quarters of an inch, and the deck is deflecting downward like this. How much is that going to help me out? How much grip force do I get with only three quarters of an inch above my steel here? How much? Not as much as if it was two inches. Now I got a cone. I talk about you guys. A cone that's a pressure cone that will help out. That extra two inches up there, that works in the favor for deflection. Working for deflection. And uh, the PSI and the extra steel work for the punching shear. Making a real rigid section here. Alright. That steel up top is for the deflection of the pad over there in the uh if it continues over which it should 
for the defection of the tributary zone. The tributary zone. And I like the extra two inches for the... I do a lot of rebar pullout tests. If you told me that you bury, you you epoxy something, three quarters of only three quarter inch cover left, I could tell you, well, that's going to be an easy pullout for me. It's going to break break the three quarter when I go to pull on it. The three quarter side is going to burst. It's not going to just pull out. It's going to burst the three. It's going to fall off that three quarter inch that you that you that you only embedded it in depth wise. That's a home run for me. Home run. All right. Now that's if you got a good embedment. I mean, good, great, tight bond. Nothing just slips. But if you tell me you got two inches there, now it might be a little bit of work. That might be enough to get the right cone going on. Two that two inches. All right, two inches matter. Now down here is where we want to see the the bump punching shear. What it would look like, you know, what what would it look like? But remember, we had those guys throwing away steel. So I don't know what I'm really looking at. I had the video of them told the runaway steel, and that's when I got shadow ban, instant, insta ban, insta ban. All right. So, but, and, and all this is kind of corrupt. You know, yeah, I could try to extrapolate and tell you that, oh, well, when it went down, it went down this direction, and doing so, it bent the steel out right here. Let's look at that. All right. That's just bullshit extrapolation because they pulled it up with a crane. They snatched it up. They didn't take this out like an art, like a, like like they're trying to get evidence, true evidence. They just grabbed hold of the son of a bitch and yanked it out. All right. So uh, with, with about zero respect, but this is the cone, if you will, that's tapered back as it went down. There's the cone. So somewhere, I mean, this has been enlarged. The column is not that big. This has been enlarged, I believe. But remember, the critical shear zone is what? We're looking at it. It's in here. It's Well, this is half of it. So it's inside here. Okay. Inside here. We know that nothing was left behind. Let's back that out by one. Then we're looking at the steel. So if we're looking at the end of the steel, or did they cut it? How much did this bypass? How much does this steel keep going? All right. They don't overlay the damn column inside here. So this is what? Just a smoke and mirror crap. All right. Now all of a sudden they can do an overlay. All right. I can tell you this is the internal slab. I guess it's the external slab. And here's what it would look like if uh, uh, the column went up. And now this is, I don't know where this column is. Do they give us the column location? Okay. So this is beautiful. They give us this slab. But they're not telling us exactly where this column is. They're showing this detail on it. But they're not telling us this is K, whatever, or M, or N. They're not saying that. Look look at the, look at it. It doesn't, let me see if I'm missing, if I'm being smart too quick. No, I don't see where that's identified. Establishing as built. Yeah, whatever. All right. Looking over to your left. 29. This is a pool deck slab. Okay, so they say this is the pool deck slab. Um, I had excavators on there and everything else. So, where are they? All right, so that's the part that didn't fail. 28 was punched. All right, this one, 28 was right there. I got photographs of that also. Um, they're showing this source 29, 28, 29. Right there, the one column. That we observed that they, that they that he's proudly talking about the one pool deck slab down below. He's not saying where this is. He, they just identified as pool deck slab, but don't say where or anything else. Let's see if we can look at the um, do some brain work here. All right, I'll do a little brain work for you guys. Um, this was this we're looking at broken concrete, um, broken out here. Appears to be broken all back here, including here. One place is not broken is right there. And it appears to be a slot for... <laughs> that was a snort. A slot for um, vertical direction up. So you guys tell me where that... There's a 4 by 4 It's an evidence tag, huh? Can't read it. 
Okay, there's a piece of, again, it goes up. It, it, there's steel that goes behind that. Look at that. Right behind that, wherever that is. There's some steel that's two directional there. So remember, they went on their way to show us the rusted steel, but they wouldn't tell us where they got it from. Um, I'll go at it. I'll tell you this one. This is a groove here in that concrete. That was that piece. They don't tell us where they got this from or any more details about it. Just saying it's the identified as, look at the rebar bent backwards, identified as pull deck slab. Hmm. You have no friggin' clue where that is. Um, let's bounce to your right. These are these, oh, these are their cores. And let's see if they look at the top first. Let's see if they did. Concrete reinforcement steel properties and condition. Yeah, they don't tell, they don't identify where this core is. All right, zooming in on it. It's got nice chips. It's got nice spacing. Um, there's no, there was not over vibration where all of them just start consolidating. And I would be looking at the ends or maybe they only stuck it in a little bit and see some con consolidated area. I don't see that. I don't see the reinforcement here either. But I see two fractures that appear. Let's see if they go across the stone. Stone's about roughly 10,000 PSI to fracture stone. I don't see any fractured stones. I'm just giving you some rough to middle on fracturing stones. Um, I can tell you about the guy drilling it. There's this where he repositioned it or something. She did extra score marks. As it was vibrating or something like that. He didn't do it. He didn't do it smoothly. Um, he didn't do it as smooth as he could. All right. I have no idea where that is, so I don't know why, why I look at it. This is that steel that I'm telling you, I don't believe is corroded. I believe it's black steel. If you look it up, you'll find black steel. Uh, that might be a stirrup around the black steel. It's just something you, you should take note of. Um, wrapping around the steel, checking the diameter. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out. Is that another, that another piece of steel? And that's that down there. It's wrapping around it. Yeah, I think that would do a hard pass on that one. Okay. Um, so we went over that, okay, above. Yeah, I'm not down with the uh, ground thing. All right, so there's your uh, um, observation used to verify level surface and uh, update superimposed dead loads. Okay, they went right there between the pool deck. Hmm. If this is the area, that's the one that had the uh, slab still in place over to there. It's also where my buddy Papa Smurf decided to do a core sample, where, of course, is one of the most stable areas there is. To the right, preliminary analysis results. Okay. Um, oh, these are the guy's core. Um... That's their core. NIST evidence. Okay, that's the one where I said he's the uh, wreck at it. And this says site report condition number one. Uh, exploratory waterproofing number two. Three, I'm reading exploratory waterproofing. Boy, they're all over this waterproofing, huh? Uh, waterproofing uh, drainage. Okay, this one is site report condition number one. Are they referencing this? Well, it just says one that says NIST evidence, heat in purple. Um, do we get to get ex uh, expand on that information? Okay. Let's move on. Sorry about that. I didn't mean for it to pop in. It keeps popping in on me when I try to just move it a touch. Uh, moving up. That's the end of that one. It was not the one I wanted, but let's, cut, let's hold on. Wait for it. Here's my further proof that they just run it down the road on a flatbed. No isolators, just strap it down. 
So you wonder why you might get further cracks and crumbling and different whatever. Okay, so they said they want to do non-destructive testing. So what do they do? They put a bolt and a wrench. They put it drill a hole to anchor their core drill to then do the core. It makes me wonder, is this fracture right there a result of the bolt right there? Look, it's in line there. Now that, a person picked the bolt. Uh, a perfect spot that lines up with whatever I'm looking at. All right, all right. What we got here? Is this vacuum or water? Um, all right. So there's your core any damn way. Always look at it. Again, looking at that core. Um, doesn't look like it's over vibrated or anything else. It looks like it's good and tight. That concrete looks tight. All right. We don't see any rebar in it. Um, it looks tight. Inside the core hole, I don't see any fractures. Coming off of it, things like that. And again, this looks nice and tight. You take that and go crush it. Do what you want with it. Check it for the fake flexural testing. Oh, there it is to the right. There's your compression test of it. All right, the flexural, you turn it on the side and crush it. Of course, you can't crush, do both of them with the same piece. It would be done. It also negates uh, um, saying that Concrete is weak in tension, negates my man. Um, um, what's my man? Uh, Newton, equal and opposite. For every equal and opposite, well, the opposite of compression is supposed to be tension. Well, obviously, somebody's doing something wrong with their extrapolations because they say it's only 10% tension. That's not opposite. That's not equal. So somebody is, their measurements, their extrapolation is off. So here's their pull deck slab they have. I don't know what it's dated, but I can tell you it doesn't have the hot tub in it. I think I said pool in it in, it, in the video. You know, I, I told you sometimes I say left when I mean right. Uh, hot tub. No hot tub in this one. But yet, they still have the stress is going 90 degrees to each other. Everything's 90 degrees to each other. You know, it's it. everything's 90 degrees, yet these damn things are offset. All right, this one is in that direction. And yet, the, the deck, it appears it would be more pulling in that direction. Remember, the rectangular array goes that way, and this is way out of bounds. Yet, they refuse to call that, along with the BMAs. If they're going to reach back and grab fake shit, so this is 1110, and this is 1110. This is the deck elevation. The same now. It's elevation. Oh, look, there's that little secret note. Remember in video two? Where I say note, there it is. So they, they, I don't know how they got this with the, it says revised. That's, um, this is interesting that they don't have the pool in this one. Um, but the, what's missing is, and it says revised. So they know this is a revision. NIST knows it's a revision. They, they make them. I told you, everybody wants to tell the truth. You can't help it. Psychology wise, there's a mistake in everything to figure out everybody's lie. So NIS can't play like, oh, we really thought this was it. No, no, no. Right there. That's REV. That's the revision. And there's the whatever. The, if you guys go look at the plans, that stands for revision. So they know this is not the original. And yet they're passing it off as the original plans. All right. And this is not true. Oh, they left it out. They, they chopped it off on purpose. But it's the revision. But they left it on that piece. Remember, the truth wants to be told. All right. This is the 1110. This was supposed to be uh, 10, 10, 10. And that's supposed to be 1110. Uh, let's see if I get this right. These are supposed to be this way like this. This one's here. This one's here. Back to the wall. Those are the BMAs. Doesn't this talk about those? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. That would because they never submitted plans for that only because the revisions do not call for removal of BMAs. There's no revision that says that. They snuck it in, snuck it under an revision. Revision, see, that's the beginning of a C right here. Column change right there. Right there. I'll show it to you. 
Revision January 17, 1980 Change of column type There's the little triangle one Notice Note You do not see the hot tub in here This is the revision they were working off of You know this is not This is a revision But they blocked it in their little Information to the public there This part so they know that there's more there's more plans. There's another plan above this one. This is not the original plan. It's a revision, which means they would catch the five foot eight up here. Oh, shit. Sorry guys. Which means they would catch this as five foot eight, no longer four foot. That the BMAs are gone, the deck elevation has changed, that this is one foot six and no longer two foot six. They would catch on to all of these details. That the hot tub is in here also. They would catch on to all of these details. But they're being sneaky, no good, whatever they are. So right there is where Nish is hiding the revision part. Which means that they are being receptive when they say these are the plans. They know that their other plans exist. They're not that stupid. They purposely are being deceptive. And the other plans would have revealed the BMA changes that the municipality did not approve because this is only approving uh, um, changing column type. Revision is only dealing with column type, but yet the municipality um, did not catch on, or they did catch on, I don't know, that this is also changed elevation. That changes at the, at the building changes. That the five foot eight out here and the removal of the BMAs took are taking place. That extra steel is going in, maybe two police, two over here, one here, something like that. I did a video on that. It's not much. All right, so for NIST to be pulling this one is just smoke and mirrors. All right, plus where he states that uh, that this is the planter box. And it's moving, that it's moving, uh, as you can see, stressed north and south. Well, that's not what the planter box I mean, shows. It shows it's going west and east. In fact, they show no stress going that direction. It's more going this direction. They only show it going north and, north and south. They're committed that it's, it, it, deflection is taking place in that capacity. Okay, without that image, they wouldn't even have any, they wouldn't have a coconut to figure this out because they had to use the uh, Miami Herald's image instead of using what I, when I did this video a long time ago, rectangular array and the plans and it being at a columns offset. So th these guys, Bell and all them, they just they just don't have the skill set for this. This is not their warehouse. I don't know what the wheelhouse is, but this isn't it. Maybe deception is, but this is not it. Well, they, they suck at deception, actually. So this states at the underside of pool deck to your left. Read the, read the title of it. As you can see, even the critical shear zone here, somewhere I ever size it was, it didn't make it out. All right. It didn't make it out. I think that's the... Uh, it did it did not make it out. Even this just punched all the way through. All right. Even the back side of it, it didn't make it out. All right. Now you see what the reinforcement looks like as it goes down across the head. Because here it is here. Hung up. As it's stripped down through the reinforcement. Now... If I could look at this a little more profoundly, can I put this piece back in here against those two? That's the question. Can I do that? There's the rebar. It goes down behind it. Through it. Through that piece of concrete. Let me follow it up. Hmm. Okay, I still have the rebar failing here 
And this is just an anchor, a cluster of concrete that act like an anchor here that as it pulled through. It just needs a little more room. If it had more room to drop more, it would have pulled it, finished that off, I believe, up top. Okay, robots. I'm not going to believe this bullshit they're doing there because remember the video camera could shake. So that little rendering to the right, that's just smoke and mirrors, guys. I looked at that many times. If the camera's shaking, that throws everything off. Something called wobble takes effect in the camera lens. And you just can't be sure what that thing was. You can freeze frame it all you want and try to overlay each freeze frame. And you still wouldn't know if it was the camera that was shaking as opposed to the building moving. Wobble, it reset. It's called wobble. Look it up. And you'll learn so much. And you'll be like, ah, yeah, right. That could fall into wobble, the shape. So that, that's not worth the energy. Again, now pull deck. Now look over here. Yep, once again, they leave out the revision. That's revision. But this time, they add the tubby. All right. Once again, they leave out the... Um, the... Yeah. I'm looking to cut this, their color scheme here. Patio deck. Drive park deck. Uh, yeah, so there's a drive park deck. I get it. You can park over here. And park over here, apparently. Um, the uh, BMA. I left out in those. Okay, we look here. They, they This is that image they showed us before. We get a very clear rendering of it. Ring around the rosy. Remember upon shearing that nothing in this whole deck shows the critical shear zone staying in place. So that said, this, this, is, this is probably more than likely a damn flower pot, uh, plant a box around the column. More than likely because it just doesn't do it otherwise. But I, I want to tell you that I got some very conflicting, even with my what's called compression. Here's the car. I have a problem with this car, remember? This car, though, could be further back, which I asked you guys, can you tell me if that car, they, were, they were home? No one's ever told me if the person that lives in this spot was home that parks there. Because this car could be further back, another position, which allows me then to have that deck when it collapsed at the construction joint um, to be further over, to be over here, in fact. With that said, it looks like it's in front of the column here, right? The, 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 the concrete. She zoomed in the camera only for a moment. It's got to do the pixels. The computer's got to fill in, and it does what it does. And so it might be putting something there. With that said, if you look up here, it's 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 almost as if the concrete was touching the gate. It's like it touched it, like the gate's bent. This one has been driving me crazy. There's a better image of this where there's actually concrete out on the ground. As you see this door, you see the door below the door? Does that look like concrete or what? That's one hell of a quick image, right? Does that look like concrete or what? This is, would be the head of the part of the shrubbery or whatever. But that looks like, I mean, that's behind the door. No matter what, that's behind the door. The door is over further. She has a photograph of it. And this gate, this gate looks bent right there. It looks like it's bent in. The gap, the reveal here looks greater here. Now, I'm not saying the concrete came all the way up there, but I'm not, I'm not excluding it. All right, I know they got out. Those people got out. But did, it, was there a secondary collapse that the lady filmed before or after 111 left? Did 111 leave? And then there was another uh, secondary collapse, and this is the the front part. But it would be. Many equipment there. The washing machine room was above. I think you would see that there. So it's not that far forward. And now that we see, this is the room above us when she zooms in and out. It's in place. There is a step up from 111. There is a step up into the laundry room. I think it's like four steps. I don't see this as laundry equipment at, at all, just so you know. There's that beautiful image where they show the critical shear zone working 
I said I would be find it. There is the level of the deck, the dotted lines. All right, and there's a little bit of deflection here. It means below the dotted lines. And they rep the dotted lines represent the dot, the, word, the, de the deck height, as you can see here and here. And then out here to the left and here. And if you see, notice this deck height is just about below the bottom of the uh, full deck, which is be nine and a half inches drop. Really? I'm, we're supposed to believe that that deck was able to deflect from the critical shear zone nine and a half inches within a distance of the planter box, plan of, of the planter box extension. That it did that. It would be the only area. This would be the only time that the critical shear zone, it deflected there. And then what? The deck building collapsed and then it fully separated at the, um, at the columns? Because we're only left with the column at that point. So when we see our, okay, when we finally see 13-1. So there is no way and chance in hell that this was there like that. That this was deflected. Yes, a deflection was going on, and it's a rotation, though, the, away from it. Not in line with it, not north and east. It's sort of southeast. So here's the column, sort of back this direction towards the butterfly zone. And that would put it this direction, too. Two directions. Now, like that. So the sagging is here in the butterfly zone. That gives us that. That can explain all the... The pulling away and the little bit of rotation took, had taken place. But they're reaching by doing nine and a half inches. Come on, really? Or is that uh, eight inches? They're, they're reaching on that one. That, that's, just, that, that's just ridiculous. Again, as you see, the, their, their, their version of it, it's only north and uh, south with no west and east direction. So they only have it rotating down in that capacity from the left, this side only going down with a little bit to the right. They leave out the fracture I'll show up here, which indicates again that the critical shear zones and this rectangular array is the issue here. All these offsets, but the number one, the critical shear zones. Remember in the beginning of the video, I showed you how a true failure should look like. If your critical shear zones are working, if they're not functionally and strong and stiff, then you get what we have. All that just column only. You get column only. Okay. So I think I should end this video, but I wanted to run through some images for you. This one I want to show you number 28 again. That's 28, which is 29. That's what he calls hooks. That's what NIST calls hooks. These are the experts. They don't get to make left and right mistakes like I make. All right, over here is where the reinforcement at the bottom or is at the head. Remember, this comes up. And my reinforcement, if I was able to straighten these back up, I would have that, re that crossed reinforcement right about there. So I'd probably call it the bottom steel that, that went across this head. As I zoom in and let it refocus. Remember, I try to bring your attention to it with hints. There it is there. That's two pieces of steel that are bypassing each other. Turn flat, not on, not, not turned up um, to the woods of the sky and one below. We only see one track. We're seeing two tracks because they laid it down flat like that. And elevated it with, no. Nope, I don't see any chairs, just so you know. I don't see any chairs that elevated that. But if I were to put this steel back up like that, it would be below. This would be below this. So this would go like this. Looking at the pro, and that steel would be right about there somewhere. Okay, and this is your concrete column. Like that. And that steel overlapping. Here's the other overlapping steel, right? Let's do that. Um, it goes past the column and this one too. So they go past the column fully. I going to say they go past the column fully. Well, you see the, you see the double tracks all the way through double tracks. So their overlap was out here somewhere on each, ah, shit, 
on each one. So they, you know, it's, this is a, it's cool. Again, all critical shear zones failed. So this is that one that, that's offset. The one that's, you know, it's out of place with these. Right? Because there it is. It's just out of place. There's a, there it is there. That's the one it does. It's that way out of rectangular way. Ray. Again, no critical shear zone present as I showed you in the beginning of the video. Uh, you would see the top of it on there if the critical shear zones work. Nope. 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 Very important because you can see that that's only a little bit below the deck. And yet, it's this one. And yet, still, critical shear zone failed. Nope. Didn't work. make it because it would be further out. Nope. Nope. It's just nope. Wait a minute. <clears throat> nope. And it, I think this is 28 back here, maybe. Nope. So all the critical shear zones. Now there's K over here. Somewhere, K1, something like that. Nope. They all failed. Every last critical shear zone failed. But more importantly, this is out of bounds. So the conflict would be to use a special inspector being the engineer yourself. In this case, it was the architect. That was a special inspector by the municipality. Special inspectors exist today. All right, that's the conflict. There is no opposite. So are they going to say that they're gonna are they gonna correct that to say look you need somebody with with uh somebody else is gonna get sued they won't have any skin in the game by saying yeah I'll back you up I'll support you all right but with that said FIU Bridge also had multiple different inspectors but they had one bully on there um, that was superior and alpha if you will against the rest of them and that's Danny Pate. He ran house on all of them because, hey, he can't, you know, how you question somebody with so much years of experience. So all critical shear zones failed, guys. All the critical shear zones failed. There is no critical shear zone above there. Not there. Not here. Not anywhere. All right. They all have failure, the critical shear zones. All right, it did not make it through. This is it, this, this would have helped. So all the deflection in the decks reflected. I'm trying to do that. Deflect all the deflection reflected in the columns directly. The loading in the columns, not onto the critical shear zones, which will reduce basically yeah, the essence, the effect of reducing the spans. Uh, because they would then make it to these critical shear zones, these big boxes around there, as I showed you in the other video, in the beginning of this, with the civil engineering site, that the boxes, they think of them as that, that giant zone, right? It's just got to make it to there, and then this one to here, for example, and these offsets were murder for this. They just didn't work. Um, so there, there, therein lies the, the death. Now, talking about which side went down first, I did a video for this for you guys showing you that the reinforcement here and here, this implies that this is the, this is the topping, that the structural slab, this is the structural slab steel, the structural slab steel, you can see it rock left and right there. If we could put that back up, you would see that, uh, that part of it was on the right side, part was on the left, so... This probably created this scratch down here as evident with it's on the left side and there's no scratch off the over there. So remember I showed you how I did a video and show uh, roll it and push it and everything else and show you that. This one, this line here, it's clearly evident in that reinforcement there, which also tells us how much it was across the other side. How much it went across the head of this. So in this column, we've got dissecting steel. So if we can look at the top of it, we do have steel like that. That's a piece of it there. And there's wherever that one is there. Right dead center. All right, so this one, we've got some dissecting steel 
literally across the head, middle of that one. When deck deflects, it goes down left and right, each of them breaking apart at the center of these guys for directions, as you know, multiple directions like this one. <sighs> There's the problem. Now, let's debunk real, fit, real fast. We're going to debunk um, the uh, bullshit from Bell. From Bell. Because he has it roughly 8 inch drop from the column in this box. This is the planter box. 8 inch drop. Okay. That means that fucking gate wouldn't open. That gate would be buckled. Right? It would be 8 inch drop. That gate would be buckled. That's why I can tell you our deflection is back towards us. South east. Alright? Southeast. This gate is not buckled. The hinges aren't broken. I looked at it from the other side. I had a guy tell me he repaired this gate though. Um, not then. It was a couple, three years before that. Told me he had to repair the gate for whatever reason. Um, but this gate is not buckled. You see it's not buckled. You know, he, he also shows about uh, the, right about there, an eight inch drop, right? About eight inches. Only about an inch and a half left. I show, this is not fractured. We talk about that in another video. This railing is not all deformed because that would have bent down also. So I'm debunking um, Bell on that eight-inch drop crap that they show us. All right, it does. It didn't. It's not. It, it's a lie to say the eight inches is approximately eight inches because it's nine and a half inch deck. Well, and you only left about an inch and a half extrapolation wise. That's about an eight-inch drop, but only with the arrow pointing this way, north and south. That means it has to be an eight-inch drop down this side of the planter box, and this would have. Locked that gate for multiple weeks, and that wasn't part of the complaint. Multiple days, rather. And also, this would have um, bent this up, distorted the um, gate. So, Bell is, again, that box. You know, I used to say this when I was a child. You know, I can't, you gotta, if you see that box, what box? That box you gotta stand on to kiss my ass. Anyway, Bell is so far off. That he's either dumb as shit, really, no kidding, working for the government, dumb as shit, or he's purposely playing dumb as shit. You pick your poison, but I, you would know it if you would ask him about the cell phones during Gettysburg. Take care, guys. Love you. Bye. Nah, I couldn't leave with you out without trolling one more time about that. Remember, this is the deck, the dotted lines. Right there is where I want you to see that that's how I could extrapolate. That if this is a nine and a half inch deck, you do your proportions to that. That was the top of the deck up there. Now it's now the uh, top of the deck is that white, right about you know right below there, the white part right above that line. Well, they're showing it as the black line, but and it's only left with a little bit of dots before it's totally below the nine and a half inches. So that would have that railing that they don't show. He doesn't show here would all be locked in that gate eight and a half inch little. Crimple that gate, broke the hinges maybe. Uh, there would have been a lot of other issues. But he, but, but he only shows this in the drawing as north and south. None of that. None of that yellow shit going the other way. Only north and south. So that means that, as you look at that image above the left, that he's only showing it this direction. And this box rotating down like that approximately. Eight inches based off of that extrapolation I see there. So somebody's going to make some one hell of a screwed up rendering, whatever they said they're going to do. What's that? Animation. And now I'll leave it with that. There's a, the, the proof of that. Only north and south. All right. So the gate would have been crumpled. All right. Again, ask Bell about those cell phone towers. What? Maybe that was a problem in the Gettysburg thing with their people, multiple people, and the lasers they were using. All right, guys, uh, take care. I hope this is helpful, but oh my gosh, I, I expected, I really, I don't know what the hell I expected, but I didn't expect it to be this easy to, deb to debunk them. I thought they'd make some mistakes, you know, you know, throw it their way, but this is totally off the rails.